This is Sir Tap Tap, and today I'm talking with Damon Branch of Last Limb Games. Would you care to introduce yourself and your game here? Hi, I'm Damon, and this is Organic Panic. Nice to see you, everybody. Well, I can't see you, can I? <laughs> uh, you want me to um, run through? Sure. Okay, so this is the initial menu. We can go into the, the one-up mode here. We have an adventure mode. And here we have some different uh, modes, editor, shared level, stuff like that. Um, so in the adventure, we start off uh, with the with the story. And then here's some early early shots we have of the story, the meats and cheeses, underground meeting, and uh, cat Stakey got burnt up. The organics are fighting back. He says, "Not on my watch." And uh, the orders out, go crush them all. And the organics, they're trying to finish off the, these remaining organics that are still alive in this world. Yeah, I noticed both in the artwork and the uh, trailers, it seems like there's sort of a struggle between the man-made stuff, the meats and cheeses, and their man-made guns, and then there's the veggies that have the elements as sort of a naturalistic attacks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's pretty... It's pretty straightforward. It's sort of elemental powers versus technology. Um, you know, it's just a bit of fun. It's not. A lot of people ask if it's uh, some kind of political message. Why are the meats and cheese is bad and stuff. I mean, it's like we're not. We're just having a laugh, and it's. Uh, yeah. You can take it seriously as you want, but we don't. Hmm. And so, what elements? Like I noticed with the, uh, the little promo, it looks like each element or each veggie has its own element. Yeah, that's right. So the guy I'm playing now is Cherry and, um, well, the girl. She, her power is, oh, her power is whatever she stands on, she blasts. So that's her basic power. So if she stands on wood, she blasts at that. It's not as um, dense. The wood isn't as dense as the rock. So the rock is more dense than the wood, so that blasts that. And the metal is more dense than nearly everything. So you can... With the metal, you can pretty much blast through everything. So that's one of like that's the strategic part with her is she's got that. But then she's also got a oh ouch she hit me. Uh, he's also got she also can blast through when she gets her special like that. She can just smash through everything, do like a kind of uh, combine har harvester like psycho run. Hmm. Um, so is that like a power up or do you have a magic meter for that or how does that work? Yeah, so the magic meter is for the blasting. That that's basically you're collecting magic, so that kind of increments and uh, decrements as you use it. And then the special, the big one, all the specials, they just last. Each one lasts for five seconds. Um, so when you've got a special, you know, three in a row here, that will be giving me 15 seconds of special. So I can go and blast up these guys. And so it looks like the gameplay is mostly based on manipulating the physics to defeat all your enemies, rather than you know just shooting them or. No standard worms type stuff. Yeah, it's uh, well, I, I mean, it's different to worms in the way that the worms is um, turn-based and also like I would say probably more strategic. Or the more more strategic. This is much more uh, like a mixture of action and sort of bash them up sort of thing. Ow. Um, so yeah, the 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 worms. Um, Relation is basically sort of ends where you have a breakable, you know, world and stuff. It's really, it's really. Apart from that, it's like so it's it's a, you know, completely different type of um, action thing. I wouldn't call it like you say an action. You do have to use the characters, uh, and you got you've got to think a bit. I wouldn't also call it a puzzle. We don't know we don't know what to call it. So. Hmm. People say, well, that's not really a puzzle game, that's like an action game. And then people say, yeah, but some of the levels are kind of puzzly. So it falls somewhere in between. It's like, uh, it's it's definitely got elements of um, elements of puzzle and elements of action. I think Anatole, my brother, put, uh, he called it a bash him up. So I don't know, that, that, that seems to have landed somewhere. Anatole's the, um, the art director, by the way. He's away today, so he's not in this interview. Hmm. So the Kickstarter says it's sort of a mix between it's worms meets um, Little Big Planet. Are those inspirations, or just a convenient way to sort of convey the broad concepts? Yes, exactly. It is. 
We didn't coin that. I mean, you know, we, we had our own description on our Kickstarter page. And uh, I don't think a lot of people got what it was really about. So a lot of the press started saying, hey, this game is like Worms and this game is like Little Big Planet. So we just basically, because everyone was using that those those games to sort of get a really quick understanding of it, we just followed suit basically and changed our title to say that so people, you know, at a glance could see what this game is about. Hmm. I know, so you got some pretty good water physics, so it's... It looks like water is a lot more useful than, say, Worms Revolution, where in Worms Revolution, like, water does, like, five damage per turn, and this sounds like you can drown the meats and cheese pretty quick, right? Yeah, exactly. All, all the real-time stuff. We only have uh, the, some boss characters that can actually survive <clears throat> in water, so it's kind of their Achilles heel. So you can you can use water in, in, in a lot of different ways, and not just water. You can use... Um, oh, so I got speeded up water. Ow, 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 ow. Um, you can you you can I mean kiwi kiwi's power is water, but the other you, there's also lava, acid, oil, and um, so there's a few different types of liquids that um, that, that are there in the game. Oh, okay. uh-huh. Is this guy here a boss? Ah, uh, no, he's not a boss. He's just a no, just a big thug. Yeah, just a big thug. He's pretty he's pretty easy to get by. Some of these early guys are just uh, you know they're there to give you a little bit. Of, um, shake you up a little bit, but they're not too difficult. It gets it gets more difficult as you go through. So, is the goal to beat the levels? Do you just get to the end, or do you have to beat so many enemies, or what are the goals there? Um, so, exact. This is a good example. So, like you see, what I've been doing is going from A to B, um, but this time I've got to collect a crystal because part of the story I got to collect three crystals in this area. So now that I have a crystal. You see the portal is, is on the uh. right hand side there. That's now my goal. So the goals can be sort of shifted around a bit so the gameplay isn't really just simply uh, A to B all the time. You really, it, it, it allows a bit more kind of balance and stuff. And what are these guys gonna do? Oh, there we go. Oh, now I can't get up there. I can swim up. Oh, yeah, there you saw him fall in there. He, he can't. Um, yeah. So I'm pumping underwater here. I'm hitting the. Um, kind of need a speed to get up there now. Let me see if I can jump up there like that. No. All right. So I got another idea. I'll just create some more water. Is that gonna get me out? <laughs> I got. I love it. I'm stuck on this level now. Yeah. It sounds like the all the levels are totally destructible, and I guess you can add stuff to the level too, like water and stuff. So, is that a is that something where you're going to need to destroy large amounts of the level, or...? Yeah, like in that last one, that's... that's oh, in the last one, it's pretty... You know, you, you as you blast the levels, all of the physics interact, so... What we did when we built the levels is we just took it... We just tried to take a little bit of everything, so... Um, so, uh, you know, there's a bit of strategy for, you know... War, war flying, things breaking, all of that, and then when people build their levels, I think... Um, you know, people will build uh, probably better levels. To be honest, you know, we just do, we just do a bit of, of show what everything um, show just a little bit of uh, what can be done using the tools, and then hopefully people um, will build you know not just levels but whole sets and stuff. Maybe we can get some you know famous designers and stuff that are fans of like worms and, and building levels and. Um, Make a make some cool sets and stuff. So that that really kind of so reminds me now, of how Little yeah, Big, Big Planet does things. I mean, they have they have the single player mode and it's fun, and they have all those levels, and it's a complete game without the level editor. But the level editor is really the main appeal of the game because you know you can make levels, and it has pretty good editing tools for the levels, and it makes it really easy to share games and you know levels, and you know basically the whole. You know, after you beat the main game, the whole economy of the game is just, you know, making and creating those levels. So, it sounds like you've got a pretty robust level editor solution for this game, too. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm, you see me in this level. So, let me just go out. So, now I'm in the level editor. Um, so, I can I can show you just some stuff quickly. Um, I can delete some bits like that. Just uh, take some bits out and make some space here. So, I'm just deleting a few objects there. 
Um, I'll show you some of the primitives we have with a level editor. This is a little simple drawing tool. Um, and then I can change, maybe change the material if I want. I'll change it to like a metal or a wood. I can change the top part of that to have some gunk on it or something. And then I can do the edges, different, I'll go in a bit closer so you can see that, but um, different types of things like grass and, and these all do different things. So mud slows you down, uh, that doesn't actually do anything. Uh, the hay sets on fire, uh, that does damage, it's like a, a little thing, and then the spikes does lots of damage. Um, so you have uh, pretty basic tools like that that you can use, and then I can, you know, build and copy few of these things so that's intersecting I could also make it so that it um, you know links together like that so you can um, basically make, uh, make that out of metal you can make you know really quickly it just sort of studs all the things together like that um, and maybe I want to put that on a let's put it on a on a little piston there now where's my character he's over there see what that does so you got that on kind of like a little wonky piston thing there so you just uh, uh, this thing as well so you've got um, this is like a little engine I can make that engine you know right now it's pretty slow just speed it up make that thing go a lot faster and also with the engines I can you know I can make them uh, you know stop and start do different things so they See, it's going forward and then backwards at certain angles and stuff. So you can have opening and closing doors, all that sort of thing. Uh, then there's a few. We started on a few visual things, so I put a little, um, a little uh, foreground fire thing there. Uh, and then with the with the liquids, I put in some, chuck in some water there. Make that brush a little bit bigger if I want. Uh, I can put in uh, some lava. Oh, that lava hasn't got the right graphic yet. Um, and you see that everything kind of, um, so the lava basically will evaporate the water. Then if I chuck a load of water on the lava, then that they'll, they'll basically, you know, what equal each other out. And I can put some oil in and set the oil on fire. So the oil goes on fire and, um, that will go on fire. So then that fires and spreads. Yeah, so you just play, you can play around with your levels. Now that thing's on fire, look, because that's made of wood. So all of the, you know, metals have density, wood floats, all of that sort of thing. So, um, just, uh, like if I, if I fill up that with water, actually, that will put out the fire. The oil isn't going to help, but that will put out the fire because the water puts out the fire. So you have all of that kind of physics. Now that thing's on fire over there, like this is hilarious. And put that out as well. There we go. Um, uh, yeah. So then, and then you can put in enemies. Uh, I could put in a couple little hot dogs here. Um, yeah, that's a, a cheddar chunk with a kind of Rambo s rocket launcher. One of these guys. So anyway, you can put just put your characters wherever you want. Move them around. Get your strategy right. Um, same thing with pickups. If I want to put like a big line of pickups along there, I could just make a little spline, put a spline with the pickups. Talking of splines, we have a spline tool, so I can make nice kind of funky boing shapes quite easily. And I can make that out of rubber or stone. Put that on there like that. Now what have we got? Just chaos, basically. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's a, and then there, there's like objects as well that you can put in, you can put in pickups. And we'll, we'll add to all of the object lists, so this is, for example, that's a, um, a lever which will turn on. I could attach that lever, see that light is blue, I can make this thing blue, or aqua. Um, so then that's, while that's off, that's not turning around, and then if I go and turn it on, now it's turning around, you see? So I can turn it off. So you can connect um, things together. You can connect pistons and engines and uh, lasers that turn off with switches and stuff. So it's pretty, pretty compact, like way of just getting to the gameplay. A lot of a lot of tools and anything that's that we find is is missing and that people want. You know, as long as it's not too difficult, we'll, we'll add in probably a few things before the first release.
So do you think you'll be doing constant updates after the game releases to add, you know, new objects and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think the initial release we're, we're gonna get, we're gonna get it to an okay state that people are using it. But I think when people really start using it on a broader level, we've, we've got a lot of support work to do to just constantly, um, you know, make sure that there's updates and that it, it's it's getting it's easy enough to to really make the levels. So one of the stretch goals is uh, versus mode. So how is that going to work out? Um, actually, I have. I don't have. We haven't done a, a versus mode yet, which is why it's a stretch goal. But what we started doing just before the campaign, actually, I just spent maybe we, I spent a day maybe making these levels, and uh, uh, me and Anatole kind of tweaked them around a little bit. But we actually have some co-op. Uh, we, we have a few co-op levels. So here, I haven't got. And we've got two joysticks plugged in, but you can see I've got the, both the characters on the screen at the same time. Um, so they're basically, I'll go down and get some magic here. So while I'm, it's actually um, pretty good fun, but while I'm playing, uh, the, 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 you know, we would both be playing at once. So the other guy's on the other joystick. Whoops. <laughs> so the level editor can make co-op levels as well? Yeah, exactly. So you, I'm in this co-op level, so that's what we do. We, we build those levels, and then we'll say, okay, you know, this rope, say this rope, you know, you, you can't reach or it's too easy to get. I'll make that rope a bit shorter or something. All right, like, let's bring that rope down a bit, make it a bit longer, or, um, you know, let's add in a, a, some chain there to help you get up there or something. Just put that on there. So you, as, you go, as we go through, we test it, you know, muck around with it, see what works, and um, adjust it. Maybe you say, okay, there's too many characters here, we can never get past them. So we'll take a character out, play it again, do stuff like that. So it all it's all super kind of on the fly, whether it's co-op and any of the other different modes that you can um, change stuff pretty quickly. So is the versus mode going to be added in later then, since it's a stretch goal, or is it going to be coming out at the release of the game? Yeah, the reason we have that on a stretch goal because, um, oh no, 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 uh, it's because we haven't, we haven't, we haven't actually designed. We have a few ideas of what we think will be cool um, as a stretch goal, as a as versus modes, but you know, it takes time, and if we haven't got time, we'll just come out with the co-op stuff first. And then we'll do the then we'll do the the um, versus modes as like a as a as a stretch goal. So on the Kickstarter, you're, it looks like you're trying to come out on PS3, Xbox 360, Wii U, PC, Mac, iOS, Android, pretty much everything under the sun. Yeah. Uh, so, are you planning to release that all at once, or are you going to stagger the release on different platforms? Yeah, we got to we got to stagger it. I mean. The campaign is, you know, we're going to be lucky to to even hit the goal at this stage because, you know, we haven't had they've only had like seven thousand views on the on the video, so people just don't know about it. Um, and although we do have seven hundred backers, so we've got a good ratio of people going there. So, um, but we, you know, at this stage, we might not even make that our basic goal. So, um, it's going to take longer to do all of the ports. Basically, the more we we make, the more we have. We can put a programmer on the Unity build, which we, we sort of um, have been working on for a while. And uh, once that Unity build is done, then we can start, like you say, staggering it onto all of, all of the different systems. But um, uh, right now, it's on. It's written in DirectX, so the first platforms will be PC and Xbox. Um, so, in the case that the Kickstarter doesn't make it to its 40k goal, are you planning to just only release it on PC or Xbox, or what platform would end up getting it in that case? Uh, no, no, that's not what we're planning because uh, it might not necessarily do well on on PC. It might not fit well with like a, a Steam or whatever audience, and it might not do well on Xbox as well. So we're not bothered about that. Either way, we're going to do the port. Um, which is why we're committing to it in the Kickstarter, because you know, there's, there, for example, we have a lot of um, a lot of we um, we you people that want it. We've got like a, that there's there's you know we don't really know where it's going to do the best. So we've spent a long time working on it, like five years. So I don't want to, you know, we our plan isn't to just come out on 
one system and if it doesn't do well um, give up on it if it doesn't do well on those systems it doesn't matter we're just going to carry on and get it onto the next um, mm -hmm. set of systems so the kickstart is more to accelerate development than you know actually enable it right yeah exactly I mean it it w we do need the money to finish the um, artwork for that so if we don't if we don't do the, if the Kickstarter doesn't work, I mean, pretty much we have to do another one. So we have to raise that money to finish off all the artwork and pay all the artists and stuff. But um, beyond that, then it depends on how sales go and how quickly we can get another programmer to help with the ports and everything. If we can, if we can't, then I'm, I, I feel I have to, you know, do the ports all myself. So it would just. You know, but like you say, yeah, you've got to, it, 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 it'll accelerate. Um, it'll accelerate. I haven't actually died yet on this. I haven't seen any, like, I'm just, like, playing for everything. Um, yeah, it'll accelerate the more the more we make with the Kickstarter, the more, um, yeah, the, the, the earlier that everyone will be able to get their hands on it. I notice you have mobile platforms like iOS and Android listed as potential ports. Um, yeah. How are the controls going to work on those platforms? Because it seems like the game really benefits from physical controls as you've got it now. That's exactly right. That's a really good question. Um, we haven't designed. We have on the tablet and on the PC. Um, on most systems. Oh, I'm going through the floor there. On most systems, oh, we do know, we do know um, how the controls will work. And like you say, on mobile, we haven't actually worked it out yet. So, I mean, it might we might have to kind of dumb it down a bit. Just uh, one thing to do on the mobile is, you know, you point here, the character just goes there. It'll be less action, more strategy. Or um, it doesn't translate uh, directly to mobile. Although there's a lot of interest, you know, people excited to see something like this on their mobile, but we just don't know yet how to do it, which is probably why of all of the all of the ports we're going to do, the mob mobile will probably be the last one. Since the game's running on all these different platforms and user-generated content is a big thing in the game, are people going to be able to share levels between all the different versions, or are you going to be limited to a single platform when you're sharing? Right. Well, that's not... Obviously, it's not the the best thing to do that. The more the more um, level sharing we can get, is, uh, the better. But we don't know, the, honestly, the... the um, Technical technicalities of each platform provider, you know, Steam might want not want to, you know, have a have, you know, uh, Wii U are sharing the levels and stuff. There's probably uh, we're going to run into um, some kind of mechanical uh, problems, but we're going to do our best to like uh, ha take care <clears throat> take care of the server side ourselves, so that you know we say you know, hey, let, you just link in the levels to our where our server or our cloud of of levels. And do that, and we'll see. We'll see who's um, um, who's willing to to let us do that. It might be that some of the platform providers want their levels to be exclusive. I don't know. We we just have to see. But ideally, you know, you want as many people making levels as possible. Um, like Little Big Planet is is you know a huge marketing push and and, uh, and, a, and a big developed game and a brilliant game, and <clears throat> it takes. It takes all of that to, to have level sharing is an interesting thing. It's an ambitious thing for us to do uh, level sharing um, on that level where we, we're where we're just an indie you know group and we've got to really get a lot of people into it and building levels for, for it to become interesting. Otherwise, there aren't new levels to play in every day. You know, it's just like it, it needs it needs a big audience and stuff. So. But we would have like like, like shared levels there, or we go into the editor. But we have like the setup, the way that it's going to work, and some bonus levels. Um, so technically, you know, we can do it just up to what the platform um, providers want to uh, let us do. I notice you don't just have a Kickstarter; you also have a green light campaign. How's that going for you guys? Um, that's going all right, considering we don't have a. The, our demo is um, Xbox only. A lot of the people. Um, and not interested. A lot of Steam people are not interested um, in a game without a demo that they can play on the PC. And the demo, the PC demo, won't be around till August. So our plan is to just build that. We're on about 50/50 yes, like yes, no, and and three percent maybes. And we're up to about uh, I think for the first week, we're not even a week. We're at like 25% to the top hundred, and 
uh, 5,000, yes, is 200 favorites. It's uh, for, and, and if you look at all our comments, there's maybe three people that <laughs> they don't like it, and then the rest is a, you know, there's about 100 and something um, comments saying, wow, you know, really good comments where people are like, I want to, this game I want to see, you know, this is like this, why hasn't anyone done this and stuff like that. So, um, very good feedback so far. We think once we get the demo on Steam, then, um, We'll, we'll uh, be able to get to that you know, top 50 that we need to get to. Yeah, it's one thing I noticed when I looked at the comments, like, everything is positive. Yeah. So it's like pretty much all the difficulties in getting the people to actually just look at the Kickstarter page. Yeah, exactly. You really need the views more than anything. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. That's kind of what's frustrating for us. I mean, if we get... Oh, oh. If we get more um, exposure and more people see it, then we've got a chance of uh, doing the Kickstarter, and if, if not, then uh, it, it's it's going to be hard because it's just uh, a lot of people, a lot of press aren't interested in covering a uh, Kickstarter project. There's you know 350 running at once at any time. I'm sure they're inundated, most people. So a lot of people don't really give it a glance. Once we oh, we just did a Game Informer article, and then. That got someone from Daily Game to want to um, do it, or we don't know if that did, but that, that probably helps. We got an, a, a thing from Eurogamer uh, a while back, and that made a big difference. That story got put everywhere. But apart from those two articles, that's the only thing really we've had to, the bigger articles we've had to drive traffic to our scene, um, to our to our Kickstarter page. But you know, we're not we're, we're developers. We don't have any kind of contacts and press stuff like that. So oh. Um, so it's been, you know, it's been a, like a, just a sort of, like getting hit by a train, we just don't know how to get views on it, it's crazy, it's crazy, people really like it, but, um, yeah, we got, we just have to get people to, we've got, we've got six more, five more days to get people to, um, go check out the page, basically. So I noticed it's sort of a familiar story with you've got the Steam green light, you've got the Kickstarter, and you're not really taking off too much, even though you've got a game that looks pretty good, and you've got you got sort of a fan base that wants it, but not too much. Yeah. And do you have any advice for other indie developers that are sort of in a similar situation to yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's hard. We don't really have any tips because we're kind of uh, struggling at the moment, but. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but you know, we did. There's a really cool game called McDroid, and that had you know that in its whole campaign made like a thousand. I mean, they really, they didn't, they didn't get any exposure. And the game is really good. We saw it at PAX in Boston. And we we're like, wow, that is amazing. And uh, it's surprising. You know, it really is down to exposure and uh, getting a few lucky breaks and getting. You know, if you if we if we on one day had five people. 5,000 people come and look at our page, that would probably put us over the top. So um, we've had a couple of things. Um, we get like a thousand in a day, sort of stuff like that. But it's really, um, I mean, people might not be clicking on it because they, they're not into the type of game it is. Of, co of course, that's going to be happening. But largely, I think it's 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 also to do with it's also to do with um, just basically how much exposure you're able to get and you know how to how to kind of get the press interested i just swap um yeah so i don't i don't really have tips i mean we're just trying everything we we follow up the press all the time with like we've chased up most of the top 200 press sites at, at least five times so we're just doing what we can to <laughs> probably really annoying them it's hard work to chase down all that press too yeah, it's it's hard work. It's a, it's a hard month. I'd be happy to have a break when it's done. Hopefully we can make it. Um, I think we still can. If we get a couple of decent articles, I'm still um, hopeful that we can that we can get the final stretch. Also, on I think on the Kickstarter, someone was telling me the other day that you have um, a lot when you do. Oh no, no, no. oh god. When you do a remind when you say remind me later on your Kickstarter page, it reminds you two days before the, the campaign ends. So <laughs> that's what we're hoping on. We'll get like a, a, a final last push, a bit of press, and uh, as much press as we can get, uh, and, and uh, a final push and see if we can get, you know, we're about, we're on about 24, 25, and we've got to get a 40. So, so a 
So. One thing I noticed about campaigns like this, usually there's a big rush, you know, right around the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then there's a big rush at the very end when everybody sees, you know, yeah, like that. sees that it's yeah. about over. You know, that sense of urgency. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one of our friends who has been helping with our campaign, he ran, he ran a campaign called Story Wars. It's like a card game, and he got on Reddit, and he got to the front page of Reddit. And uh, it went. His campaign went um, from I think less than it was doing well, but it was from two hundred thousand to three hundred fifty thousand in two days. So you know, it it, it, it can it can kind of happen. But uh, I think generally that's a, that's a special case. But I think generally when I look at the other ones, it, it, it does tend to go up at the end to get that. Like there's a bit of urgency to it. Maybe. It's a multitude of things. People get reminded, and also uh, uh, press start covering it. Maybe it's like interesting. Hey, this is like got a day to go, you know. R rather than this is in the middle of its campaign, it's not really a story. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're we're each day we go through the campaign, we're understanding more and more um, of the mechanics of, of of how it works and stuff. How you can. Kind of cross promote with similar games and similar themes and things like that we, that we hadn't considered when we started doing it. Yes. Whoosh. So with these levels, can you control which playable characters are available to the player? Create exactly. Yeah. So in this one, in this level, I have uh, Cherry and Kiwi, so water and earth, and uh, so I blast that tree like that. Um, if I wanted to set the level up. Say so I wanted to change the level. I said, "Oh, I need carrot in there as well." So now I can put carrot in there. So you can change, you can change who who you want um, to bring into the level. This is like a, a a dry wood, so that doesn't that doesn't burn very fast. Whereas like a bamboo or something would burn a lot faster. If I had a piece of bamboo like that, just burn that. So when you're making a level, can you like decide which characters you want to design the level for, and then restrict the player to only playing with those characters? To so sort of have to use what you give them. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And um, it's not, yeah. So you can play with the characters, play with the enemies, and you can also play with the rule sets. Like here, I got 46 seconds to go, um, and I'm collecting these pickups. So this is a time mode. You can set it so that you can have time modes. Uh, I haven't actually shown you all the modes. There's a bunch of um, uh, let me take you into this one, which is like a kind of this is a hybrid of a co-op level, but you play it on your own. So more more kind of like strategic, heading towards the lemmings type thing. So we both have both the characters. I got to get them both to the portal instead of swapping in, in that that way. You see, so now I'm Cherry, and I, he's she's stuck down there. So I need Kara up here to go and help her out. So we have like uh, you know different levels, different game modes, so let's, let's go up here, oh, now I can use Cherry, blast through here, oh, didn't mean to blast that, oh, oh, no, kind of, it, this kind of gets more difficult because i got to keep both of them um, safe, so you got you got to be a little more strategic with this one, oh, is that, that that's the gas, it's the tear gas, which is, keep away from that. There we go. Oh. Um, so, so what I'm saying is, um, when you do, when you make a level, you can work out what characters you want to put in. And we have about five different uh, game modes as well, from like, timed modes, modes where you're both on the screen, modes when you swap, and then uh, co-op. Uh, so, are there bosses in the game? And if so, how does that work? Like, I noticed as one of the Kickstarter goals, the it was, you know, extra bosses as one of the ideas. So, what do you got there? Uh, I have a boss. Um, we we haven't done all of the boss levels yet. We have a uh, half of the code done for them. So there's a boss. There's a boss character for each of the characters, and uh, we're gonna. I think what we're gonna do is put the. If we can, we put the boss levels at the end of each level. But I do have a. I do have the final boss level, the finale. And uh, I can't really show you that because that's uh, it's it's in production. It's a you can see that it's a space level, but um, 
it's got low gravity and everything, but the, I have, the graphics are all temporary, so it looks pretty bad. So uh, there's no point in showing you, it would just be like, um, also, I prefer to just keep it as a surprise. Spoiler alert. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it would. It, it is as part of the story. The, the, the whole story is kind of giving a lot of it away if I, if I do that. But, yeah. I saw a mention of a comic of the game. Is that going to be part of the game, or is that going to be something separate, or what are you going to do with that? Yeah, so the comic is part of the story, so let's go and um, we have uh, the the comics all written, it's about 120 stills, um, so if you go through the game right now, it all, you see all the text, but we have only about half of the these rough um, drawings done, and then we have to colour them all, so the comic is it's a big part of the game, kind of like guides you through everything, and it's, it's fun, and it's got like the humour to it, so... Um, uh, that is one of the things that we have to spend um, time just doing it for the last few months is colouring in and making sure all the story is done. So this guy, for example here, uh, Carrot's uh, been spotted running into the jungle. At the Baby Cheese is the head honcho and he says, uh, go get his orange bar. And then they head off in the chopper. Roger over, we've got visual on the target. Closing in now, requesting tr trigger on Operation Clover Carrot. Request granted. Uh, then they smash through. He's playing his little guitar hero there. He's like, oh fudge! And uh, they got, they've got him. Target acquired. And then Apple and Cherry, they're seeing what's happening in the crystal ball, which you've got on the previous level. And um, they're, they're they're off to go save Kara. So that that gives you an idea of just the how the um, you know the story blends in, and you get introduced to all the characters, and then you. You have this band together, and then there's a bunch of twists and turns as you go through like 12 stages. So you reveal little bits of the comic as you go through the story of the game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then we're going to make from that those comic things, we're going to make do some action parts and actually do a whole comic that we're going to do to go with it. So we, the comic's a big deal. We like the the story and everything, and you know the guy that uh, our comic guy actually works for Marvel is really. Um, you know, it really gets it. It just makes it really easy when, when we have an idea and he can just visualize it really quickly and, and get it done like super quick. It's, it's great because it can be really hard. Anyone who, who's been who develops comics, you know, you really someone with a, that kind of experience is like it's, it's just brilliant. One of the higher rewards on the Kickstarter was access to the beta. So, what platforms is that beta going to be on? And uh... When's it gonna? When are people gonna be able to have access to that? Yeah, I'm not sure if we can do the say the beta on XBLA because they don't they don't like I don't know if they let you do that. I don't know how like the system works. I think it, they never used to. I'm not sure um, if they if they do now. But the beta really more is for the PC um, audience. So as we're building the tools, and that will be um, well, I, I would say at this point, if we make the Kickstarter, that will be at the end of September. So. I just got to do the do the port to there and uh, probably toy around with the editor a little bit, just make sure that there's no crash bugs or anything like that, and then yeah, start start giving it out to people as early as we can, really. As far as the port's concerned, you're doing that over Unity, right? Yeah, well, we've started the port a few. I haven't actually been that back to the port in a few years. Um, we started a long time ago. We have all the infrastructure in there, but um, it just. I haven't got time to do that and the, and the basic game, so uh, that's just been sitting there waiting to, to take all of the code and, you know, one by one element, just put it all across. Um, but we do have, yeah, the basic build. We're not using all of the Unity tools and, and all of their pipeline and everything. We're just using all of the basic libraries and all of the basic, you know, the code essentially. And, which, and we have our own kind of like, the, the pipeline essentially is the game itself because you make all the levels in, in the game itself. So um, that's, uh, we, I don't know. We reckon if, 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 it's a, if it's someone that knows Unity well and, and, and uh, best case, I reckon three months to, to have that Unity port done. And it might be more like, um, might be more like six months. Hopefully not, but we'll see. So part of that Kickstarter money is basically to hire somebody that's more experienced with Unity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if, we, if not, then we have to wait on the sales of the game to, to hire someone. Um, and if the sales of the game aren't good, then I'll do it. But you know, either way, the, 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 more, the, the, the more exposure I think it gets, the, the quicker it'll get out of there. 
So the game's been in development for five years, so has that been mostly slow and steady progress, or have you been hitting some big roadblocks which have been delaying that? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So a bit of both. It's slow and steady progress because um, I, uh, I basically, uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I don't get to work on it all the time, every day, like a full-time thing. The art work goes very slowly. We haven't got, I mean, my brother does all of the... Um, art direction for it and, and, and does all of that, but he hasn't been able to work on it full time because he's been doing freelance jobs uh, to get by. I'm looking after my son and uh, I, you know, just work on it when I can. So it's been slow in that regard, but um, it's also taken a long time because, say, for example, the liquids took a huge amount of time to do. I wrote the, the liquids and it took me about five or six months to write the first draft. It took me ages. I didn't know how anything about fluid mechanics and stuff. So uh, once I'd done all that, I had to throw all of that away because um, it, the, I couldn't have like levels full of water. It would only let, allow me to have like maybe 500 particles of water. Um, so then I, I found another way of doing it. And then it took me another six months to get the new water system working uh, where I can actually, where I could use all of, all of the, uh, now we can have 100,000 particles and it doesn't affect the frame rate. So it took a long time. It took, and then you have to have all the water interacting, putting out, um, putting out fire, that's pro um, and then, you know, floating, different things. I'll show you, putting something metal and that'll sink. So just having all the water, Fluids interacting and everything took a that was that was a, that was probably the biggest thing that took time and also we've built a load of levels and we've spent just a whole year uh, having our friends come over and test it and um, um, uh, bug fixing we've we've got thousands of bugs listed that we've gone through over the last year and uh, just the the complexity of all the systems it's just taken you know, ages and ages to adjust all the gameplay, make it feel nice, and, um, and and bug test everything. So I don't know, honestly, I don't know where all the time went. It's just like, it's... The water physics are pretty impressive. So you built all of that yourself? Yeah, so I don't actually have any sort of physics training. I probably should have looked at somewhere doing it when I first started. But, you know, eventually I kind of worked out, you know, I hashed something together to get it to work. Half the problem is knowing what, you, what you're doing technically and how to represent water physics, which I didn't know how to do. The other half is like, given that, how do you actually get the water physics to work on a, you know, Xbox 360 isn't exactly the most powerful system in the world. So um, getting it to really be optimized and work was a, another big challenge. So, you know, I kind of just spent a long time doing a lot of these uh, sort of optimization things and basic things to kind of just get it to work. And this is getting hot now. Let me get out. Okay, okay. Get me out of it. Ah. So with these pseudo co-op levels, do both characters have to make it to the end for you to win? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You gotta you gotta get them both there safely. Doesn't I mean a lot of people play this level, they get through it one character and they go, yay, and they're like, wait, what's going on here? Oh I've got to get the other guy through as well, so it's pretty funny here. Oh, I'm out of two this one. Mm -hmm. Let's get this guy. Um, yeah, so the, the five years just uh, it just it just went by. Actually, I never thought it would take five years. I knew it was ambitious what I was trying to do, but yeah, I definitely didn't think it would take five years and. You know, even with the art stuff, it's like it takes a hu it just takes a, hu a huge amount of time. There's like animations and there's uh, all the all the texture work, all of the background work, all of the comic stuff. Um, there's you know, and there's still loads of stuff to be done. So without a team, without a full team working on it day in day out, these projects. I mean, you I saw you know I saw I saw uh, Castle Crashers demo and two that I got about like three. Three years before it came out, maybe in 2005 or 2006, and I was like, wow, these guys have been working on this forever. So that's about all my questions. Um, 
Do you got any final words? Um, no, I would just say um, if you like if everything you've seen, then definitely check out our Kickstarter. And if uh, if you if if you like it, you want to see it, then uh, pledge, and uh, you can give our Facebook a like, and you can you know tell your friends. Just uh, any kind of exposure that we get is is going to help our course. We've only got five days to go, so. Um, and just, uh, you know, check it out if you think it's cool. Yeah, and there'll be a link in the description for, I'll have the Kickstarter page, the website for Last Limb Games, and the uh, Steam Greenlight. And one thing to remember with cool. the Kickstarters, if a Kickstarter doesn't get funded, your money doesn't get taken. So, um, if you guys donating, uh, you guys don't need to worry about if the game doesn't reach its goal, you're not going to pay. So, you don't, you're not worried about that. He's yeah. worried about that, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not worried about that. So, game's looking great. Um, uh, hopefully, if you get a press demo ready sometime, I'll definitely take a look at that too. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get you that for September. Right, I look forward to it. Thanks okay. for the interview. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>